take a conservative 60% uh, uh, annualized growth of Bitcoin, uh, median growth, then you'll reach $2.9 million in 10 years. So if you have uh, billions of dollars in debt denominated in dollars, but you have some Bitcoin, you can actually get out of that debt spiral. Okay, hi Samson. Hello. Um, it's really an honor to have you here. Um, it's really good, great to meet you in the conference. I saw your stage um, and also um, you're like moving around, meeting a lot of people, talking to people. Uh, I, I can feel, I already knew you were a star in the Bitcoin space, but I, Small star. <laughs> I, feel, I really feel it now. Um, anyways, um, this is Block Media, uh, the largest crypto and blockchain um, media in Korea. There are many, many uh, fans in Korea following you as a Bitcoiner. Um, could you introduce briefly yourself to the Korean fans? Sure. My name is Samson Mo. I'm Samson. And uh, I'm the CEO of Gen3. We're a Bitcoin technology company working on accelerating hyper-Bitcoinization. So bringing more Bitcoin adoption around the world. So what has changed since? Um, what's the highlights you can tell our audiences about Gen3? So we've done a lot of work this year in Latin America. Mm -hmm. We visited uh, Argentina last year. Uh, we visited Costa Rica this year and Mexico. I'm probably forgetting some, but there's a, there are a lot of discussions happening all across Latin America because uh, Latin America is in need of Bitcoin. They're in need of a stable money. A lot of countries are looking towards dollarization or, and using dollars, or they have used dollars, yeah. but ultimately the destination is Bitcoin and we're trying to work with them to develop Bitcoin strategies, possibly doing a Bitcoin bond mm -hmm. or adopting Bitcoin as money. Wow. Um, so I've been looking into your Twitter account before the interview. You mentioned a lot of Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, is it pretty much the same situation there as well? Well, Indonesia is interesting. They're a rapidly growing economy yeah. with low inflation. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're right for Bitcoin adoption because they have a lot of energy. So what Bitcoin does is it turns money into energy and information. Yes. So a lot of countries actually have a lot of energy. They're energy rich countries, but what can they do with the energy? Unless it's able to be put into a barrel, you can't really do much with it. Yes. But with Bitcoin, you can simply mine Bitcoin and now you're a rich nation. So this is going to be very transformative throughout the entire world. Yes. All of these countries that have been poor traditionally, historically, are now rich countries. We just have to show them the way. Yes. But when I tell them this change in the foundational rules of the world, they're very intrigued by the potential of Bitcoin to transform their economies. Wow. So I, um, I think Indonesia has the fourth largest population in Asian, all Asian countries. Mm -hmm. um, do you see, how do you see Indonesia adopting Bitcoin, helping the Bitcoin adoption to um, expand to the rest of the world? Well, and I what's the role of Gen3 in that movement? I think every country that adopts Bitcoin mm -hmm. puts more pressure on every other country to start paying attention. Oh, yeah. Right. It's sort of a domino effect or game theory because the first countries that adopt Bitcoin will become the next superpowers. Yes. They will be the ones that have money and they can buy raw materials, they can you know, do anything. But the key here is that we need to find strategies for each country that works. Yes. And I think uh, Indonesia is very interesting because it is basically an economic powerhouse, they're number 16 in terms of GDP, right. and they're growing very fast. And I think there is no El Salvador in Asia yet. Yes. It could be Korea maybe, but we'll maybe. See. But um, Indonesia could be that, because right now they have a governor that is interested in Bitcoin adoption. Yes. And he could potentially be the next president of Indonesia. Wow. So. <laughs> Things are very interesting in the world today, yeah. where you have political candidates, presidential candidates, that are starting to make Bitcoin a key part of their platform right. and a key part of their nation state policy. Mm -hmm. Right. So the governor of Indonesia spoke on the stage in this Bitcoin 2023, 2023 um, conference, right? Mm -hmm. And you were there with him and talked about 
um, Indonesia adopting Bitcoin, investing in Bitcoin, and also use their um, renewable energy to mine Bitcoin as well. Mm -hmm. Is it actually happening already, or if they just have a plan? So they're, so they're already working on, on Bitcoin mining. They have a public-private partnership with one of the miners and uh, they're already starting to mine. That's it's right. not a large operation, but they're already mining. Just like El Salvador wow. is already mining. Yes. Um, Costa Rica also has the same thing, a public-private partnership. Yes. And they are also mining. So I think um, not everyone knows the landscape. Like the Kingdom of Bhutan just came out recently and said they've been mining since 2015 or something yeah. like that, right? I saw the news. There are probably more that are quietly doing this. So okay. the world is in a very different place now than it was before. And I think what we are doing is trying to work with more countries to understand this new reality and put together a plan forward for how they can take advantage of this change. What do you think the restraints they feel when they want to adopt Bitcoin in nationwide, nation state um, scale? So you said some of the governments in the world, they are adopting Bitcoin quietly. Mm -hmm. Are there reasons for that because of the regulation or what? Well, regulations can be changed, yeah. right? so that is a malleable part of the system. Now, I think there's traditional FUD that can make it challenging, right? There's a narrative that Bitcoin takes, consumes too much energy, yeah. or Bitcoin is used for criminal activities or things like that. But I think a lot of these have been starting to fade away, like people are not thinking about these as legitimate arguments against Bitcoin anymore. But. Um, it is still a factor, and one of the things that we're doing is educating governments on what Bitcoin is. We try to just stick with my original thesis, which is Bitcoin is money, or think Bitcoin is digital gold, because then they can understand it. Like, yes, criminals can use gold, they can breathe the air and everything, yeah. so it's not like Bitcoin is designed for criminals, it's just an, an asset, and it's accessible by anybody. Of course. But, um, I think it's it's the trend is towards adoption. I don't know if they're, they're scared, but more, I would say they're trying to go in gradually, and those private public partnerships are a way for them to dip their toes into it and and start learning. Right, right. Um, you've also counseling El Salvadorian government to adopt Bitcoin and expand their um, expand, uh, let the business come into El Salvador for Bitcoin adoption, right? Um, how is the process going on in El Salvador? I think they're doing very well. They've rebranded themselves as Bitcoin country. Yeah. Uh, they've seen a massive boost in tourism, maybe 30%. And they've seen double-digit GDP growth. Wow. So they're actually doing very well for themselves right now. Wow. That's in terms of Bitcoin. They've bought back some of their debt. They've, uh, they're getting an increase in their credit rating. And the media is now saying like people want to invest in El Salvador because they see the growth potential. You have all the the pieces, right pieces of the puzzle. You have a president that's open to business. You have uh, investment coming into the country, and yeah. the country is safe, and they're not in Bitcoin. So it, it's a way for them to leapfrog and, and get ahead of a lot of other countries. How is the Bitcoin bond coming along? Um, do they still have the plan to? initiated i think so so they've released their digital securities law which would allow okay. them to do the bitcoin bond um, they can issue securities under Salvadoran law and they formed a new regulator to regulate the issuance of securities but i'm not sure exactly what the timeline is i've been more focused on working with other countries to structure their bonds but one of my recent thoughts are maybe the original bitcoin bond design did not need to have the digitized token part of it on liquid right. They could just use a traditional bond vehicle and still buy Bitcoin and still mine Bitcoin. But they don't need to go through the hurdle to make a digital token. I see. Interesting. Um, there are so many altcoins in the world, right? There in are. reality. And they are growing. I feel like it's growing because I'm in South Korea. I'm running my own business in South Korea. What do you think? Um, how do you see this? Like, the growing of our coin area, how does it impact Bitcoin adoption? Um, do you think it's a threat? Do you think it's a, there's a there's a, a chance of making um, symphony uh, mingle? Can they both coexist, mingle together? 
altcoins and Bitcoin will coexist for some time, but yeah. all of them will trend to zero. So there's two things that will happen. One is either people give up because they can't make money off of making altcoins anymore, or the government says these are unregistered securities and they're going to go after the teams that do those. And we're starting to see the SEC do exactly that. So well, something is going to happen, but long term, all altcoins trend to zero. Like if you go back 10 years, are those coins still in the top 10? No, no. they all go. Most of them are not. Yeah. It'll be the same thing. There's always something new and there's always something that might go up a hundred times and there's always going to be some guy that wants to put some money into it for speculation and hope that they're going to get rich. So right. it's really, you just really need a shift in thinking. You need to get more Bitcoiners thinking long term, thinking about fixing the world for future generations. And the only way that can happen is to fix the money. Because money is the base layer of civilization. Yeah. It's the way we interact and trade and exchange value with one another. Everything else is a distraction. Altcoins are just a distraction and they will fade away. What's your view on the stablecoin? Tether had um, the most successful year last year in mm -hmm. terms of sales profit. Yeah. Uh, what do you see in the stablecoin area will um, eventually become? So stablecoins aren't going to last simply because fiat currencies aren't going to last. Yeah. I think I said in some event in 2018, stable coins are a mid-step to hyper Bitcoinization. They help facilitate people getting onboarded into Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And you know, as if the dollar dies, then you don't want a dollar stable coin, right? And I don't think that Tether expects that it's going to stay around forever because one day fiat currencies will fail and everything's on Bitcoin. But until we reach that point, it's a valuable tool to uh, provide financial access to a lot of people in the world because now you can have a US dollar savings account without having a bank. And that yeah. is very transformative. And I think that utility is why they're able to grow so rapidly. Like Tether is immensely popular in the global south where people don't have a bank account. So it's just a tool that empowers people and it's a useful thing until we reach hyper -Bitcoinization. It's a really good concept. Mid step to the Bitcoin, hyper Bitcoinization. Yeah. Great. Um, what about the US dollar? It's still the global reserve currency, the strongest one ever ever exist, existed. And but these day, uh, rec quite recently, China and Russia they are all like trying to move away from the dollar global reserve currency system, right? What do you see? How do you see this uh, phenomenon? Uh, moving forward, US dollar, is it going to actually fail and just be vanished? Well, all fiat currencies will fail. It's just, <laughs> okay. look at history. But um, you can definitely feel the erosion of the power of the US dollar now with these different groups trying new things. Um, you know, they're trying to create a dollar back, a gold backed currency as well. Um, but I don't think the dollar is going to disappear that quickly simply because a lot of the debt in the world is still denominated in dollars. Yes. But that will change if a lot of countries start doing Bitcoin backed bonds because now you have dollar denominated debt, but you have Bitcoin which will rapidly appreciate. So some of the modeling that we've done is uh, what will Bitcoin look like in 10 years? And if you take a conservative 60% uh, uh, annualized growth of Bitcoin, uh, median growth, then you'll reach $2.9 million in 10 years. So if you have uh, billions of dollars in debt denominated in dollars, but you have some Bitcoin, you can actually get out of that debt spiral. Right. Um, is there any chance, um, when, so when the US dollar actually goes away, um, is there any chance the world goes back to the gold um, reserve currency era? No, I don't think so. Because yeah, gold is just, gold is def defective Bitcoin. Yeah. Right? You can't move it easily and you can't verify it. So there's no way it's going to go back to a gold standard. Okay. But what I think will happen is we'll end up trading Bitcoin for gold. So the major exchange rate is not going to be BTC USD. It's going to be a BTC, what's gold? XA, XAU, yeah. right? Or Tether has a gold product too, right? It, it yes. could be XAUT. But it's going. that is the standard because it doesn't really make sense when you think about it that you trade Bitcoin for something that is printable, right? Yeah. It makes more sense to trade Bitcoin against gold because it has a history and it is not artificially fabricatable. Right. 
even though it doesn't have the benefits of Bitcoin, it's still harder than that. True. Uh, you also have an opinion on the lending of Bitcoin, right? Uh, what's your view on the lending business in Bitcoin? Well, if you want to lend it, <laughs> you can do it, but I just wouldn't lend it. I don't see value in taking that risk to get a few percentage points. And the, the other problem is most lending platforms now do uh, a bucketization of money. So when you lend them something, they put it all in one bucket and they do something with your money, right? Yeah. You don't have very much visibility into exactly how they're allocating or what they're doing exactly. But lending could be okay if you're using a peer-to-peer -peer system because then you have a direct peer that is hopefully over collateralized. So in the case of some problems, you can still recover. Would you uh, want to um, put your Bitcoin in a really large bank like JP Morgan if they um, provide the savings account for Bitcoin and generate yields? Mm, not really. I mean, I don't really see the benefits still. Like, yeah. It's still too much risk. And for people like us that are technical and we know how to store it safely, you don't really need that. But I could see some people, maybe you know, your grandmother, grandfather, that don't know, then they could do that. And it makes sense because they're just not tech savvy enough. But for anyone that you know, can do it, they should self-custody. What, what do you think is the best way to invest in Bitcoin then? Just buy Bitcoin and hold it. DCA? Mm, DCA is okay, but uh, buying the dip is good too. Oh, buying the dip is good. Right. Um, it's harder to buy the dip than it is the DCA. It's a lot harder. Yeah. I'm not good at it, so I just buy, buy occasionally, every, every month when I receive the salary. Mm -hmm. But yeah, buying the dip is definitely difficult to do. But it's the highest payoff. Yeah, of course. Do you think this is the dip? Right? At this I think level? We bottomed already. You we bottomed already, okay. The bottom is hit. Like the fair market price of Bitcoin should be forty plus K right now. Oh. With all the drama, in my estimate. Then is is the price oppressed because of the high um Fed fund rate? Interest rate? I think it's just the market is very fearful right now of what's oh, okay. to come. There's a lot of uncertainty and Bitcoin is still viewed as a risk asset, but it won't last much longer because we're one year away from the next halving mm -hmm. and we're seeing uh, more and more accumulation by shrimps, which is Bitcoin holders with less than one BTC. Yes. That's at an all time high right now. So the buy pressure of all these people at this conference is starting to overcome that friction and supply is going to get cut next right. year. So. The only way is up. Yeah, mathematics, right? Yeah, it's just inevitable. Do you any Do you have any final words for our Korean audiences? Um, I think study Bitcoin, avoid the shit coins, <laughs> and uh, there's a Korean Bitcoin conference that's being planned right now. Yeah, which is interesting, I think, because Korea has always been very shit coiny in the past. Yeah, and maybe this is a time to transition into more Bitcoin pragmatism. I hope so too. Yes. Yeah. Um, Samson Mo, and I'm Brian Peck. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Samson. Bye, y'all.